Oh, uh, good old caller Nick. I wonder what I wonder how he'll take it if James Franklin loses Friday to state. Just as like a chef's kiss. Welcome in. Uh we have a absolutely jam-packed show today. Uh, we are gonna do who said it. We are gonna get to the picks. Why? Because I'll be the only person working Friday. And the picks aren't as fun if we don't have the crew here. But I think the best thing that's gonna happen today is our new sports expert, Roberto Beauchene. We'll be filling in for Rico Beard. And Rico has no idea this is happening. <laughs> Rico's record in Roberto's hands. Um, we're going to talk a lot about the Lions. I do want to have some fun with the holiday. Why? I, I don't know. Who? Do, I don't want to be stressed out with sports. Uh, but the Lions are good news. We'll get to Michigan, Ohio State Friday. That's the more appropriate day for it. Day before the game. Um, David, do you mind if I start out with kind of a, a continuation of a brief topic we did yesterday. Sure. You started something yesterday, and I think it's continued. Yeah, go ahead. So yesterday I said I was about 90% sure you were hiring, if you were Michigan State, you're hiring Mike Elko or Jonathan Smith. I gave you positives, negatives. Uh, you could use the rewind if you want the, the longer delivery, uh, or YouTube if you want to watch the video. The point is, Roberto, I'm doing radio. I have a headset on. No, I don't want you to sit it. Get out. This man is deranged. I can't. Roberto, Roberto just did what the listeners in Vegas do during the March Madness show. He's talking to me. I have a headset on. Oh, my. You know, Roberto, right here. The point is now I have listened to an interview with Jonathan Smith. And it makes me believe that's who's going to be MSU's next head coach. Again, I don't do coaching searches. I don't break news. I'm not into it. I don't care about it. I'll leave it for investigative report. I'm just telling you, listening to the interview and thinking about the following. I'll play some audio for you, by the way. Just give me a moment. Oregon State plays Friday night. Michigan State plays Friday night. I think it's a mortal certainty MSU's already interviewed Jonathan Smith. When would the second interview take place? Pretty quick after that sec after that game. And you probably wake up Sunday morning to Jonathan Smith being your head coach. That's what it feels like. Remember this. This isn't about preference. I'm not I'm not yelling about this. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I cannot make a determination on whether I like the hire until I see who is on the staff. And now in the new wave of college football, what type of NIL support does State have? So I want to play for you a piece of audio. And the name of this guy, was it John Calzoni or whatever it is? Correct. <laughs> no, seriously, what is it? It, it's, it is Calzoni. I don't know if that's first name is John. but it's, Whatever yeah. it is. The point is, he had Jonathan Smith on his show, Oregon State Radio. And he asked some really good questions. I give this gentleman a lot of credit. He, he asked the right questions. He did it respectfully. Good on him. John Canzano. Canzano, Calzoni, tomato, tomato. The point I'm making to you is this. I want you to listen to this and tell me if this is a guy who's not leaving Oregon State the minute the clock strikes zero at Outson Stadium Friday night. Take a listen. Yeah, he asked them if he's looking elsewhere. Okay, so that's one. He was then asked a question about should fans be nervous about him leaving Oregon State. Take a listen to this. Look, to a certain point, what do you want a coach to say? I get it. But my takeaway from that, knowing he's already been interviewed, knowing he's in the round of a second interview, knowing that if you look up Oregon State's schedule next season, they don't have one because they don't have a home. They don't have a conference. Their revenue is in total flux. Knowing that Look, I'm not telling you going eight and four or nine and three at Oregon State uh, is the single greatest accomplishment in the history of the world. But Jonathan Smith has built a, a really good program, a program that you don't want to see on your schedule, a program that has gone to war with the best programs in the Pac-12. They've gotten wins, played Florida in a bowl game last year, put up a 50 burger on them. Um, it's an incredibly hard place to win. And Jonathan Smith knows this is probably his zenith. This is probably as far as he could take it. And now losing the Pac-12 as a conference, losing Pac-12 revenue, you are a, in essence, 
a Mountain West head football coach next year. You go, well, why would he take the state job? Well, what's a better job that's available? A&M doesn't want him. A&M is on a different planet. And until or unless you see Chip Kelly fired, because remember, Jonathan Smith was born in Pasadena. He's a California kid, Oregon State alum, Oregon State player. His coaching career, all west of the Rockies. Look, if UCLA was available right now, I tell you, he'd go to UCLA. But as we sit here right now, I listen to that interview, see a couple of reports have popped up today that he, not Mike Elko, is in fact the top choice. It kind of points all in one direction. So my question would be this. If we take the air Monday and Jonathan Smith is named head coach, how am I supposed to feel about it? Now, it is no secret. Oregon State's been a pet team of mine. I've watched more Oregon State football than any of you. That's not a flex. That's a sad admission. (laughs) I have watched a lot of Oregon State football. I love the guy. I mean, I love his schemes offensively and defensively. Trent Bray, his defensive coordinator, I think is fantastic. Here's the problem. We just go to brass tacks. My concerns about Jonathan Smith really don't have anything to do with football. My concerns are the following. Quirky guy. I think you hear a little bit of it in there. And you go, well, Mike, all coaches are weird. Understand something. Weird can work when you win, and you win big. Weird gets weaponized when you don't. And you come to the Big Ten East as the deep end of the pool. You know what I don't want running my team? A goofball. I've already been through that with John L. Smith. And remember, John L. offensively was fantastic. You go go back to that for for the young people out there. Kenny won't remember because Kenny was young. But if you if you go back and you pull up MSU at Notre Dame in South Bend and watch John L's offense put forty on Notre Dame, watch John L's offense go into the big house, take Michigan to triple overtime. Look, that offense was legit, but he was goofball. I don't think he understood what he was getting into. I think there's a little quirkiness to Jonathan Smith. My other concern will be, I love his defensive coordinator. I can't tell you his D.C. will come here because there are no Midwest ties, none. And someone's going to have to go into Ohio and recruit. Someone's going to have to know the landscape. Someone's going to have to know what to do. Now, whether that's attempting to keep members of the current staff, which I don't really like, or it's poaching high-priced people with those contacts somewhere else. I don't have that answer. It's not fair to Jonathan Smith. It's not fair to you, the listener. I can't cast a huge judgment. And I haven't gotten married to one candidate. I told you the dream sequence all along, the conversation changer, paradigm shifter. Sure, you want to dream about Urban? I was all aboard. I would never get in the way of that. But between Elko and Jonathan Smith, no, I like them both. I'm I'm certainly very familiar with both, and I'm I'm a big fan of Jonathan Smith as Oregon State's head coach. I, I would need to see what the plan is, what the staff looks like, what does NIL look like. See, Jonathan Smith, here's another thing. Whether it's fair or not, Jonathan Smith at Oregon State, that's a different planet from Michigan State. And recruiting is a different planet for Michigan State. Look, Jonathan Smith might be in on one four-star player a year. One. At Michigan State, you're going to blanket offer 200 of them. You're going to go out and attempt to get some of the best players in America in your living room. And you'll probably lose out on some of them. Most of them. Or in some cases, all of them. But the reality is you have to be able to bring in, on a year-in, year-out basis, a top 20 recruiting class. Otherwise, you're not going to ever flirt with the playoff on a semi-consistent basis. And I say playoff, the new playoff, 12 teams. But I would love to know. And again, we're going to have fun with the holiday. We're going to get to the Lions. I thought it was interesting listening to that interview last night, waking up to some reports saying, yeah, it's Elko and Smith, which I told you. um, But it's actually Jonathan Smith is their top choice. Then you really start thinking and you go, wait, State plays Friday night. So does OSU. State, if they're really serious about it, could get in there. Oregon State can't match money. They won't be able to match facilities. They won't be able to match a $100 million a year check from the Big Ten media deal. If they want them, 
and that UCLA job's not open, yeah, I, I do I think there's a decent shot you could wake up Monday and he's your head coach? Sure I do. I also know Michigan State would screw up sex with Pamela Anderson in her prime. They would, like, go to do the business, and they'd break their back trying to get on the bed. Like, MSU can mess up anything. Here's a winning lottery ticket. All you need to do is bring it to the store and claim your money. State would get hit by a bus. <laughs> the ticket would go fluttering into the air. So I, I just, I don't do, I'm not into like the huge prediction thing. But I, if Jonathan Smith is, the, is their new head coach. Like David, what's the word you would associate with it? What is that? It's hard to poach a power five coach. It is they would have accomplished that. He's a program builder. They play tough, physical football. They're going to run the hell out of the ball, heavy play action, great schemes, great tight end usage, whether it was Musgrove who's with the Packers now, into Veerling, the guy they have now. Like, they use their tight ends. They use multiple backs. They take deep shots. There's tons, tons of concepts. Defense based on havoc. Pressures, blitzes, TFLs. It all makes sense on paper. But when you hire someone who has no understanding of Michigan State, no understanding of the landscape, no familiarity with the Midwest, that's very scary to me. If I were doing radio in L.A., I'd be telling UCLA to pay this guy $8 million a year and hire him. Because that's his homeland, so to speak. Are my reservations legitimate? Can I be a fan of a guy but still be nervous? I think it's fair with what we have and what we know. Because um, I was going to say the, the word, and it's not even a word really, it was going to be TBD for me. Because I just don't know what the staff looks like, what he's bringing with him from his current roster. And remember, one of the staff members I like best is his defensive coordinator. Can you even get him? Well, I, or, or is that who Oregon State taps to be the a head coach? Exactly. And again, do I want to bring, look, your defensive coordinator has to be a big-time recruiter as well. Can you bring another guy with no familiarity of the area? I just thought it was interesting. We're only going to do a couple segments on it. I wanted to build off what we talked about yesterday because now reports are coming out. This guy is the first choice. This guy is the one they want. And that interview sounds like a guy who's leaving. You want to tell me I'm crazy? Tell me something. <laughs> Call up and say, I like turtles. I don't care. 248-539-9797. We're going to get to the picks. We're going to get to who said it. We're going to get to Thanksgiving disasters. Roberto with our annual black versus white Thanksgiving bowl, which menu reigns supreme. We got it all. And yes, your lions in what is a dream sequence holiday. All before we're out of here at six.